Hi, this is Ushio, and welcome back to Angels with Scaly Wings. We are on to chapter two of the mod, so we are going to see how the story goes a little bit, skim through it, and get to this next meeting with Naomi. Meet with Naomi. Here we go. Hello, hello. Oh, very nice. Good to see you again. Hey, Naomi. Likewise. Welcome to my place. I apologise if it feels a little bit barren. I've only recently moved in here, and most of my personal things are stuffed in the closet. Uh, looks a bit drab. Wow. It's great. It's fine. No problem. Oh, no need to sugarcoat it. I don't like the arrangement. I've got that much. No, really. Personally, I enjoy this style. And so do I, but it's kind of too empty for me. To make it worse, some of the furniture I got with the apartment is straight up useless, like these chairs, especially in such a large quantity. And what if you have guests over, like today? One chair would suffice, you know. Maybe one more would be handy if Sebastian suddenly decided to appear at my doorstep. That's two in total, not six. I just keep knocking them over and pushing them aside all the time, and you have no idea how fast it becomes extremely irritating. I'm not here to listen to your complaints, what? Uh, I can imagine. Especially picking them up and setting them right again. Oh, don't remind me. With how clumsy my hands are, it's even worse. She led me to a white sofa in front of a large TV. I took my seat by the armrest on the left, while Naomi settled on her belly on the cushions nearby and shifted her wings slightly. Anyway, make yourself at home. There are snacks and drinks in the fridge, and if you're interested, I've got a few movies here that I think that you'd enjoy. There are also some nice little series I've got full collections of, but those would take too long to sit through on for a single visit. Is this what you normally do with your spare time? Yeah, for the most part. My work doesn't leave me a lot of free hours, especially during more complex cases. But I try and fit in at least some minor entertainment to ease my mind, but there's nothing better for it than diving into an interesting story. I see what you mean. What sort of stories do you like? To be honest, anything well written enough will do for me. Well, maybe not cop or crime dramas. You get enough of that already, yeah? Yeah, and the stories barely represent reality anyway. Other than that, as long as the story is decent and the characters are good, I'll probably enjoy it regardless of the genre. Do you have any preferences? Action, drama, horror, comedies, adventure, sci-fi and fantasy. Let's do this one. I see. Since you like good writing, have you tried any books? A few. Adeen suggested a couple of good ones for me to read, but I didn't really get into it. They take much longer than movies or series, and my eyes are already very tired by the evening. I also can't enjoy them on a sofa with a drink and a bowl of snacks without smearing the pages. I still owe her a replacement copy of that historic autobiography. Oh well. I only have my hands to blame. You seem to talk about your hands a lot. Because they're a constant source of annoyance, tasks that are simple for you, they're not trivial for me. We all have our drawbacks. I don't have your strength, swimming skills or the ability to fly. But I've got problems with just picking up or operating small things. You can tell which of the abilities is more important in everyday life. How long does it take you to cross town though? Naomi eyed my legs for a moment and sighed. I see what you're trying to say. You can't have everything. Uh, value what you have. You always want what you're missing. It took you long enough to realise such a simple thing. Wow. Um, you always want what you're missing. The grass is always greener. Humans dreamed of flight since the dawn of our civilization for many centuries, but only recently, using extremely complex machines, we've managed to lift off the ground. Yet, the machines aren't nearly as agile or easily accessible as the wings that you're born with. You're right, no matter how much you have, there's always something desirable way out of your reach. But I guess those are the things that keep us going forward in life. Of course there's a fine balance between time to catch the stars and setting realistic goals. Oh no, pragmatic people chose the latter. Some dreamers would gladly dedicate their lives to the former. What kind of person are you? Hmm, a bit of both. How so? It'd be silly not to have short-term goals, but life without a greater dream is just a boring routine. I see, a balanced approach must have helped a lot in your line of work. What about you? It's a little bit complicated. I guess you could say I'm closer to a dreamer, but with only a vague idea of what I want to accomplish. Everyday little things are of no concern to me, 
I just want to try and help out people to the best of my abilities. How did you end up in the police force then? Oh, long story. Ah, uh, we got time. Okay, but first, let's get some fresh air, if that's okay. Sure thing, a short walk would be nice. Oh, I was talking about the balcony. That's good as well. Good, take the door to your right, past the painting. But the balcony's right next to us. It's a corner apartment, dude. Okay. Out we go. Very nice. She is rich after all. I was met by a light gust of humid sea breeze which gently washed over me before disappearing just as suddenly seconds later. Wow, more useless chairs. Don't even remind me. I've got so much work to do in this apartment. I like the view though. It's nice, isn't it? Yesterday, I spent the entire evening just sitting here and staring at the horizon until the sun completely set. The days of hard mental work certainly make you appreciate every moment of peace and serenity, moments when you can let go of your thoughts, set aside your worries and calmly take in your surroundings. From what I've heard, meditation works wonders for people with stressful jobs like yours. It sure does. Speaking of which, you wanted to hear how I became a police officer? Yeah, don't get me wrong, but you don't strike me as someone who'd be looking for this kind of work. No, it's fine. To be honest, you're right. I guess I'd better start from the very beginning. After getting my degree and trying out a few places, I was still looking for a job that would actually feel substantial at its core, not just means to an end goal of earning money. Finances were obviously not the answer I was looking for, and considering that keeping myself afloat wasn't an issue, I could afford to keep searching. The local orphanage was looking for volunteers, but as it turns out, I was never good with kids. I allowed them too much, and keeping track of everyone at all times exhausted me. One day, I missed a kid climbing over the fence, and he managed to sneak away. I found and returned him before any staff could notice, but it was a clear sign I wasn't cut out for that job. I considered trying myself at moving science forward, but with minds like Anna, or even Damien already present, what could I help to contribute? It's a very sobering experience, after the high grades at university, to suddenly realise how mundane you really are, and that your skills and knowledge aren't anything special compared to the true talents. Not everyone has to be the greatest in their work field, yeah? Yeah, I understand. But I also wanted to at least pull my own weight. However, I simply couldn't do that in science. Uh, Well, he's got a lot of weight to pull. It's so rude. <laughs> you could still try if you wanted to. There's no point. I know my level. It's not enough. For a while, I simply gave up. I was good at what I hated and absolutely unfit to do what I dreamed of. I spent my days by the seaside looking at the horizon and wondering what lies beyond it. Our people had never tried to expand past our home continent, and even here we have many wild and frankly dangerous places untouched by civilization. But it pales in comparison to the mysterious unknown lands. Nobody has any idea where they are or how they look. Don't you have a space program? A space program? You know, launching things into your planet's orbit, using rockets and stuff. Your technology could probably make it happen. Never heard of such a concept. It sounds amazingly interesting though. Back home, we use satellites, high quality cameras and computers to draw a full accurate map of the world. Here, the only widely used vehicles are boats and sometimes trains on railways for long distance travel. There was never any real demand for any other means of transportation, so they're barely developed. This is why I was curious what other places are like, and I still am. But back then, it became almost a mania of mine. I started training in survival skills and wilderness, fishing and hunting. I practiced my venom spit until I could hit a bird a good 40 meters away. Several months later, I thought I was almost ready. But then reality hit me. I talked with a few people and realized that nobody else was interested in such endeavors. I couldn't do it alone and there was no team that I could assemble. It must have been hard to accept. It was. Afterwards, I spent weeks wasting my life, either by the seaside sunbathing and diving, or at home, enjoying the pointless entertainment provided by TV and the computer. Meetings with university friends were scarce as well. At that point, I started to question the very reason for my existence. Until one day, things changed. During that time, I stayed up late and never hurried back home, so when the sun had set that evening, I was still on the shore, watching the last traces of red fade away in the distance. Suddenly, a large brown earth dragon walked up to me. It was Bryce. Yeah. 
but back then I didn't know him, so I assumed the worst, and prepared to put my venom spit in practice to good use if he tried anything. We were all alone on the deserted beach after all. Yeah, he can be pretty scary. Uh, better be safe than sorry, that one. That's what I always say. One minor slip could make all the difference between a safe life and death. Of course, he meant no harm and just asked if it was okay for him to set up the annual police team get-together on the spot nearby. He said that I was about to leave anyway, so he was free to do whatever. But for some reason, instead of just nodding and walking away, he offered me to join him. And you just accepted? After some hesitation, I did. I never liked big gatherings, but I'm also not very good at saying no to people. To this day, I'm not sure if he wanted to help me feel better or if he was just trying to hit on me. I wouldn't put either past Bryce. Yeah, same. Regardless, during the party, I got to know Bryce, Maverick, Zhong, and the old timer, Lillian. They managed to talk me into opening up a little, and later suggested I join the police team. I already had good physical training for one, and Lillian, who was soon to retire, saw me as someone who could take over her responsibilities. Apparently, a finances degree had a very beneficial side effect, which I didn't realise at first. My analytical skills overall had been greatly improved. I signed up the day after and got accepted almost immediately, soon finding myself in the analytics department. I was even given my own office, albeit rather small and obviously designed for a runner or similarly sized dragon. During the final months before her retirement, Lillian did her best to teach me everything she knew about investigations and police work in general, and I will always be grateful for that. When she left, all of her responsibilities had been transferred to me, making me a fully fledged, albeit young, police officer. And what happened to Lillian? After the resignation, she moved to the same big city that my family did, so we at least get to meet up every once in a while. The usual stuff, you know, hang out in a bar, share news, have some drinks. Quite a lot of fun for an old timer. Oh, she's only 43. Police officers retire early, in about 20 years of service. Actually, it's the same back in my world too. A curious similarity. You could certainly say that. So, do you like your job? Does it feel like the place you belong to? I guess so. I'm helping people and contributing to making our world a better, safer place. It's probably as good as it's going to get in my life. Maybe one day I'll fulfil my dream and see other continents, but until then, I've got my duties to follow. You'll get the opportunity eventually, I'm sure of it, yes. Keep up the good work, but never forget your goals and dreams. I'll try my best. Naomi looked down at the street below the side heavily. I think we should head back inside. Okay, why? I glanced down as well, and saw a loose group of dragons that grew larger by the minute. They talked over each other, and were too far to properly hear, but Naomi and I seemed to have the sole focus of their attention. People were starting to gather below to get a glance at the mythical human. I'd rather not deal with creepy stalkers around my house, regardless of who their real target is. They wouldn't harm you or me, would they? I know they wouldn't, but they're annoying, and it's a bit creepy. Okay, let's go back in. We return to the large white couch. I can't blame the people, though. If a dragon paid a visit to my world, the crowds would have been even bigger. Sounds pretty uncomfortable. Say, so, what about you? You could come back to my world with me, couldn't you? Is, is this an offer? It's just a question, for the sake of our discussion. I'd have loved to, to see how you live, your people, your towns and cities. There's so much I'm curious about. Oh, and your technology. Must be amazing. If your PDAs are any indication, you're decades ahead of us in computers, robotics and the like. Though, I'd be rather concerned about the whole part involving getting a lot of extra attention. Yeah, you probably spend a lot of your time being swarmed by people, taking pictures, asking questions, trying to get an autograph and stuff. That can't feel good. No, I'm sure our authorities would keep them away from you if you asked. That would probably be too much trouble to ask for, and some people would get upset because of it. I think I'd better stay here than deal with crowds, to be honest. A shame to miss out on so much, but oh well. Enough boring talk. You want some fun, right? It's never supposed to be a, a vacation. What a killjoy. I'm looking forward to having a lot more fun, if you know what I mean. That's okay, coming on a bit strong. Finally, I was falling asleep. Dude, cheer up. I've been enjoying my time here already. Yeah, keep it cool. It's nice to hear 
but it would make for a somewhat boring evening if we didn't try anything else besides endless discussions. So, how about a movie? What have you got? You said you like adventure films? Yeah. I think I know a good one. Let me set it up. Well, what are we going to watch? Naomi slipped off the cushions in a single fluid move, not unlike a huge cat, and walked up to the device located below a large wall-mounted TV. She fiddled with it for some time and then made a quick trip to the fridge before returning with two portions of snacks and drinks. The dragoness placed them on the glass table nearby and hopped onto the couch, sitting next to me. Now, we're all ready. She picked up a sizable remote and pushed a couple of buttons. A second later, the screen came up. What are we going to watch? We're actually going to watch a movie. What was it? A couple of hours later, the movie came to a conclusion. A long journey of unlikely friends to save their land from a maniacal wizard turned out very long indeed. Yet somehow, not once did I consider looking away from the screen. Both the magical world and its inhabitants felt almost organic and real. Predictably, it ended with a traditional happily ever after, but with a sequel hook twist. These films have quite a following in our culture, actually. Personally, I think they're good, but not the masterpieces so many people are making them out to be. I mean, yeah, it was fine. It was a reasonably decent and pretty entertaining film, but I feel like they were missing something important. That's exactly what I was thinking. All the main pieces are in place, but something prevents them from working together. I guess this part of our get-together's over. Do you have anything else planned? Not really, no. It's pretty early, but I doubt we have the time for another movie. I think I've seen enough for today though, thanks. Yeah, that too. Honestly, you caught me in a bit of a hard spot, because normally I'd go right now. But with Reza at large, we can't afford any risks when it comes to your security. It's best to play it safe until the incident's resolved. And it's probably going to take a while, seeing how little evidence we have at hand. I'm doing whatever I can to help. I know, and we're all grateful for the assistance you provide, don't get me wrong. Reza's case is advancing slowly, and it's certainly not your fault. Maybe you could tell me more about him. What kind of person is he? Okay, for as long as I've remembered him, he's been outspoken, determined, and full of enthusiasm about any undertaking he faced. Many praised him for such an attitude, but naturally, a few clashes here and there were inevitable. It sounds like they shouldn't have assigned Maverick to look after him then. It's a conflict waiting to happen. Probably. I feel like it was a poor display of character on both sides. I agree, Maverick is hard to work with. I know from experience, but Reza has also been showing rude disregard for people around him. And they matched up to make a perfect storm. How I wish it didn't happen like this. Maybe then none of the people would have died. Do you believe that Reza's guilty? So far, I've got no other versions to work with. The motives are rather transparent, and if you align the list of people who could have used the murder weapons with those who had a motive and opportunity to commit the crimes, you're only left with one name, Reza. But what if someone else is trying to set him up? I mean, it's possible. However, who else has a motive? Maverick heavily despised Reza, and he doesn't have the hands nimble enough to wield a knife. Nobody else is even aware of the situation enough to get an idea to frame your colleague. You could argue that said murders are completely unrelated to humankind's visit, but nothing connects the victims otherwise. Oh no, I've checked carefully many times. I mean, there might be more to it. Maybe some details managed to slip past us? I understand you don't want to believe your colleague to be a murderer, but so far, everything is pointing at him, both directly and indirectly. I spent so many hours building and polishing the case, you wouldn't believe it. Do you think I wanted to go on vacation in the middle of an important investigation? What vacation? You never said nothing about that. Oh right, I completely forgot to tell you. Bryce gave me an actual order to take a day off, and it wasn't up for negotiation. Recently, he caught me in the office a good four hours after the shift had finished. He was apparently going home from a bar and saw the light coming from outside. He looked worried. Of course he's going to be worried. Bryce seems the type who deeply cares about every person on the team. Yeah, it's true. He reminded me of all the times I stayed up late and said that I'm burning myself out and should get some rest. I tried to argue, but he firmly stood by his position. That's not everything either. He actually escorted me home and warned that crossing town at night is dangerous with the murderer at large. 
And I didn't even think about it until he pointed it out, which is kind of stupid of me. So here I am, neck deep in material to process and analyse, but with an unexpected day off coming up. I mean, Bryce is right, you can't burn out. You won't do much good if your mind is too tired to function properly. You should always look after yourself. I mean, I guess. And I don't want to find out if the murderer is interesting CME gone. I often stay out way past sunset, and that are given the perfect opportunity to strike. You're pretty big and strong though. I doubt they'd dare to attack you. Did you see the maintenance guy, the second victim? Our species are very similar in size and strength. He didn't even get a chance to fight back. I think I better play it safe until everything settles down. At least I have enough movies and a computer with network access, so it shouldn't be too boring. It could be more fun with friends though. Yeah, but the police department guys are busy, and none of my former university colleagues are anywhere to be found. I'm sorry if what I say sounds a little rude or too personal. Okay, shoot. I'm surprised that a dragon like you doesn't have a special someone. Okay. I mean, you're clingy, you're cute, um, we're just wondering, just wondering. You seem like a nice dragoness after all. I guess this is just how things are. I don't feel like I've ever had the chance to meet a person I consider for such a role in my life. Or maybe I'm just not trying hard enough because... Because I'm afraid. Afraid of what? Of getting rejected or humiliated, and then having said person think less of me for the rest of my life. It sounds kind of extreme. I doubt anyone would actually do that to you. I know, but then there's another fear. Something I once almost fell victim to. The fear that said person would lie to me and fake acceptance, only to use me one way or the other. Once bitten, twice shy. You mentioned that earlier, but you talked about it so lightly, I didn't think it was anything serious. I've long moved on, but I just can't trust people in such matters anymore. Maybe not yet, anyway. Eh, take your time. Find a person you like, get to know them better, and then try and show some subtle signs of attention. Sounds like a good plan. Are you speaking from experience? Yeah, a little bit. What happened after? Are you still seeing the person? No, no I'm not. Why? What happened? It's not the best time to talk about that. Okay, I'll think about using your method. Okay, cool. Do you have anyone in mind, if it's not a secret? No, not really. We'll see how things unfold. Naomi turned her head around toward the window and glanced at the street behind the glass. Following her, I turned my head and leaned to look as well over her shoulder. It was still rather light, but clouds next to the horizon started to turn orange-red hues, marking a quick approach of the evening. It's getting late. We should prepare to leave soon. We? Do you think I'll let you go home unguarded? Oh, right. Sharply, she turned her head around. Her muzzle ended up inches away from my face. Back off or kiss. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, shit. Go for it. Before I could reach her, Naomi moved her head back in surprise. Let's take things a bit slower, please. We still don't know each other that well. Oh, I'm sorry. Apology accepted. Anyway, I suggest that we have dinner before going. It sounds like a plan. I know you said you don't like cooking, but how about I make something instead? You can. I was planning to order for a takeout. Let me see what supplies we got. What's in the kitchen? I got off the sofa and headed toward the fridge. A quick glance over the supplies revealed a rather sizable selection of fish, chicken and meat snacks, some algae and a wide variety of vegetables. Quite decent for someone who doesn't cook at home. She doesn't seem to have oil or anything like that, but plenty of sauces to choose from. With most of the food already pre-cooked, preparing something with it wouldn't take a lot of time. An idea clicked in my mind. Beef and vegetables, fried fish, chicken fillet, vegetarian. Is she vegetarian? I can't remember. I think, I think, maybe? After brief consideration, I went with an idea of a light vegetable salad with some algae on the side. It required no heating of any sort, however cutting up all the components and probably mixing them up was going to take time. From the corner of my eye, I noticed Naomi intently monitoring me from her resting position. She's just chilling out watching us cook.
Okay, she's really staring. Look away. <laughs> Eventually, the cooking was finished, and I loaded the fruits of my labour into a single large bowl. Together with it, I grabbed a couple of plates, some bread, and returned to Naomi's couch. Only then I realised a complete lack of cutlery, save for a lone ladle. The dragoness put the food on the plate and took a few hesitant bites, mostly concentrating on the algae slices. A few minutes later, she glanced at me, merrily munching on the salad. Thanks, I think this is enough. You don't want more? Oh, I'm fine, don't worry. I finished the rest of my serving a few minutes later. Naomi barely touches hers, did we make a mistake? I guess we should get going. Yeah, let's call it a day. My apartment isn't far from here, so there's no need to rush. Well, I'll need to buy some more supplies after escorting you home, and the shops aren't going to stay open for much longer. I see. I hope I didn't make a boring host. I'm not very used to having people come over, to be honest. But thanks for stopping by. Personally, I'd say it was fun. If you want, we could meet up again someday. There's an idea I'd like to try out during my vacation. I'm sure you'll find it fun as well. Okay, we'll see. We walked up to the main door and stopped for a moment while Naomi was fiddling with the lock. I still can't get used to this cursed thing. Upon opening the door, however, we were greeted by Sebastian idly sitting on a couch and leaning back with his eyes shut. Seb, what are you doing here? I thought I was the one responsible for Ushio today. Oh, you can't be responsible for any assignment when your shift's over, dude. Oh, okay, I get ya. Why didn't you let me know that you were here? I've got enough room for everyone. I'm still on the clock, so I was patrolling the area. I only sat down here recently to take a breather and look after the main entrance. Right. This is it for today then? Yeah, I'll take it from here. At least you won't be late to buy your supplies now. Yeah, should be just enough time to drop into a few extra places as well. Get that shopping, see ya. So that was the second meeting with Naomi. So we're going to check out the third meeting in the next video. This is Usho signing off and hopefully I will see you next time.